All right, guys, I'm going to start off with a question. How many of you guys go to the gym? How many of you guys take pre-workouts or know of somebody that takes pre-workouts before going to the gym? Yeah, most of you guys do. All right, my topic today is on pre-workout supplements. And why I chose this subject is because I used to take pre-workouts for a very long time. And it just has a, it had a bad effect on me. And, and I'm going to give you a little definition on pre-workout real fast. Pre-workout supplement is used to add energy to a workout and increase performance with a mix of ingredients including caffeine, creatine, other energy and mu muscle enhancers. A supplement such as Jacked or No Explode, I don't know if that sounds familiar. Um, my main claim tonight is that pre-workout supplements have a negative effect on us. And my claim that I'm going to be supporting with that these supplements are not FDA approved. <coughs> they contain high amounts of caffeine with related side effects and they contain illegal deadly substances. Yeah. All right, my, sec uh, my first claim that these supplements are unregulated and, som and sometimes can be uh, contaminated with illegal substances. Trisha Walters, a student from Iowa Medical, stated that these supplements are not tested to ensure how much of the substances in the label are not contaminated <coughs> with any substances outside of the label. So whatever you see on the label, it basically, um, they put fillers on it just to make this make it look like it's more, but actually the ingredients are very small. It's just called a filler. A journal on sports nutrition published an article stating that pre-workout supplements contain 30 plus ingredients, not including the caffeine, arginine, and nitric oxide boosters that are the main ingredients. Arginine and nit nitric oxide are other stimulants used for vasodilation to open up bl uh, blood vessels and caffeine is a vasoconstrictor. So you can almost see like what that does to your body. It's immediate tension. Um, with these untested, unregulated substances in the drink, the consumer takes the high risk of uh, unknown substances in the product. You're just basically taking a risk every time you drink it. Because of the non-regulation, they purposely put high amounts of caffeine, and that brings me to my, sec uh, my second claim. High amounts of caffeine with related side effects. The actual definition of caffeine through dictionary.com is that it is a stimulant drug. Caffeine's. The Mayo Clinic of Performance Enhancing Drugs reports that stimulant side effects can include nervousness, irritability, insomnia, addiction and dependency, heart, palp heart palpations and rhythm abnormalities, which I felt, weight loss, tremors, mild hypertension, hallucinations, and heart attacks. Each serving of pre-workout contains about 300 milligrams of caffeine and or three cups of coffee. A, uh, a study at John Hopkins University, which uh, from the Chicago Tribune said that half the population consumes about 300 milligrams of caffeine alone, every day. This equals about four monster energy, energy drinks, to put it in perspective for you guys, um, every single day if you take it with a pre-workout. Four energy drinks that you're just asking for a heart attack. Um, like I said, four energy drinks, it's might as well you're asking for a death sentence. And that brings me to my third topic of uh, they contain illegal deadly substances. New York Times reported on February 2nd, 2012 that two army soldiers, sol well, soldiers died from heart attacks during their exercise after taking the pre-workout jacked. In their toxicology following, on February 22nd, they found doses of DMMA, or dimethylamine, in their blood, making it the cause of their death. What DMMA is, is a stimulant that's used to treat ADHD patients, or students. It's basically meth. That's what they put in the pre-workouts. WebMD, <laughs> WebMD said that DMMA was added to the World Anti-Doping <coughs> Agency prohibited substance list in 2010. That means it was basically banned from adding to any type of drink, but still, in Feb on February 22, 2012, two soldiers of the United States died because they took it. Um, in summary, I want to say that pre-workout drinks are, cause only negative effects on the body. They're not FDA approved, which makes them just unregulated. You don't know what's in them. It contain high amounts of caffeine and um, just illegal deadly substances that have long-term effects on the body. Thank you.
All right, the proposition is clearly identified. You have a layout of the secondary points, although sometimes those points aren't always phrased as claims. They're just uh, data, and you need to give us the inferences that we're going to draw from those claims, especially on the second point, for instance. Um, on the uh, first point uh, concerning the lack of regulation and uh, the uncertainty about the contents, I think you need a little bit more information on that point. You had one authority that you cited there, and I thought that that was a pretty good start, but it really felt like it didn't develop much past that. And this is the place where you're also making an argument that says the FDA doesn't regulate this, and I don't know uh, what that is based on. Is it is the FDA, do the FDA rules not cover these materials? Are these products exempt for some reason because they don't fit into the F, under the FDA's uh, auspices? Um, are people violating the rules and the FDA just doesn't have the ability to enforce their own rules? Or are these things you know, perfectly acceptable? Uh, nobody has ruled that they are problematic and so it's okay to put them in. I, I don't really know the context on that and I think that needs to be explained a little bit more. Uh, the whole second point is basically the argument about caffeine and I think it gets a little confused because uh, the, there's one point where you're talking about the person the average day person's uh, daily consumption of caffeine and I think your argument is that if you were adding this on top of this or doing this three times a day it would be uh, you know substantially increasing the caffeine intake I think that makes some sense um, the uh, the potential dangers that you cite you've got the example of the soldiers uh, dying because of this substance but if it's a banned substance and it's in something that's being sold commercially, uh, there has to be an explanation about how that happens. Uh, there's got to be an explanation about, like I said, why the FDA doesn't have jurisdiction over this. And I didn't really understand how that kind of thing can happen. And I'm not saying that it didn't. I know that you know, we got two dead guys here uh, who apparently took this stuff and this contributed to their death. The question is, why was that able to be in there? And I didn't think that you came up with a very satisfactory answer on that. I do think you have a very good way of speaking to the audience. You're very direct. It's easy to follow the structure of the argument. And you get to the point pretty quickly, but I think you need, I think the proof is a little bit thin on a couple of those points. All right. Thank you.